the very last thing we'll talk about here is throughout all of these classes, we've been using Notepad++ in the very beginning, and then we moved on to Eclipse and used that extensively. Um, there's other uh, there's other routes that we can take as well, so I wanted to touch on those so you can explore them, because I myself haven't gone very far with them either, because there's many ways to skin the digital cat. Now what I've done here is, in the network drive, I've downloaded these for you, which might be faster from the internet, but um, in the network drive, I didn't put them in to any folder. I put them into a folder called IDEs. Don't copy this folder just yet. It's 300 megabytes. I'll tell you what's in here. Um, that might interest you. There's um, a copy of the Android Studio IDE, which is eventually... We've been using Eclipse, and Eclipse existed for a while, and Eclipse is used to create a variety of types of software. Google then said, okay, let's create our Android development tool to attach itself to Eclipse, because Eclipse existed before that. So eventually Google decided, well, we're piggybacking on, on Eclipse. Let's um, create our own type of Eclipse. Let's create our own IDE, our own editing, our own editor, um, which they did. If you, if you go to developer.android.com, you'll see Android Studio. That's their, uh, that's their own code editor. Um, it's still in beta, and they're updating it here and there. And I just noticed, I, I used it a while ago, and I downloaded the latest version, which is now what they've done. Uh, I don't know if I did something wrong or what, but if I go here to download, it's going to give me a zip file. Whereas the last time I downloaded it, a couple of months ago, it gave me a full-fledged installation file. A file that installs itself to Windows and goes in the control panel for you to uninstall and into the start menu and everything. And if I try to download it now, it's going to give me a zip file with no installation file. See, it's giving me the zip file. So I don't know. Things are evolving, devolving, sidevolving. I don't know. But eventually, I surmise, their official Android Studio is going to be the, the app of choice to create Android apps, not Eclipse anymore. Um, this is still in transition, it seems. There's a quick screenshot of it. Um, you know, you'll be able to continue to work with what we've done in Eclipse, but just with the Google officially branded development tools. I've played with it a little bit. Not really enough to give you much of an opinion. Eventually, I bet they won't have any other thing to download. Maybe they still will have the Eclipse plugin for people that still like Eclipse, but one day this will probably be the, the be-all, end-all. And notice it says here, caution, Android Studio is currently in beta. Some features are not yet implemented, and you may encounter bugs. If you're not comfortable using an unfinished product, you may want to instead download and continue to use Eclipse with ADT. So has anyone played with this? Is Android Studio. So there's something to learn to play with over the weekend. And that's only available for Windows, looks like. It's available on Windows because it recognizes my user agent string, but you might try to go to it and it'll recognize yours. Fair enough. But you're, even if you're going to use that, you will still need to use Cordova yes. to build to create the template. That's right. This is this is going to work as if you're assuming if it's assuming you're going to do it the traditional way of creating a Java-based Android app, but then you can still use Cordova, PhoneGap, and then shoehorn it in here and then take it from there. Now another IDE that tries to solve that problem, it comes all already built in with Cordova to create Android apps and other on other platforms too. In my folder here is this one called XDK. Specifically, it's Intel XDK. If you search for that, the address is complicated. So just search for Intel XDK, and that should take you eventually to software.intel.com slash English slash HTML5 tools. Intel XDK. 
This is supposed to be an alternative to creating Android apps. It's a, it's a software to do your coding and your programming and your development and your emulator and your deployment to your device and other stuff. And it's got, it's got Cordova built in. It's, it focuses more on HTML5 instead of like Java in Eclipse. If I take a quick look at that, what I put into the folder for you is the installation file. It's 132 megabytes, this SDK thing here. The Android Studio is 173. And so the easy and fast way to get your apps to market, provide Intel XDK HTML5 cross-platform development tool, provide a simplified workflow to enable developers to easily design, debug, build, and deploy HTML5 web and hybrid apps across multiple app stores and form factors. So let's see, are there any screenshots or videos on how it looks? I tried to clutter it up earlier today and it wants you to like sign up um, for an for a further Intel account, yeah. Yeah, in order to actually do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's the first thing you'll see. So it, it asks you to create the free Intel account and then you log in. Okay. And then you can use it. But um, let's see this here. Hi, developers. How you doing? My name is Andrew. And I want to talk to you today about how you can make a quick and attractive user interface for your application using HTML5 and the Intel XDK. Those of you who don't know, the XDK is a free tool. You can get it here at xdk.intel.com. It looks a little bit like this. And it includes a new application tool called App Starter, which is what I'm going to show you. App Starter essentially allows you to create a user interface using a drag and drop system and then edit the HTML5 code appropriately to make your app. Let me show you how easy it is. I'm going to switch over to the XDK right now. And this is an application uh, that I wrote using App Starter. I'm going to show you how you can make your own App Starter application. Come up here to Projects, say Start a New Project. Select Use App Starter. Give your application a name. Click Create, and there's your App Starter application. At this point, you should come right into the design view where you'd be able to add uh, pages and elements to your application, and navigational elements as well. So here, if I go to my footer, I can add others. Here, let's find a camera that'll link to that page, and maybe a location page, like so. All right, in any case, once you have your application built using these drag and drop tools, you can... So you see uh, you've got this alternative building tool, created a project, he created this nav bar at the bottom pretty quickly just by selecting some items here with the icons and such, got the interface, it's all HTML5, so you can switch to the code view, edit it that way, and then within the app you can also emulate it. Come right over here to emulate and see what your application is going to look like for reals. So, uh, remember, we've got uh, this Intel XDK. You can find it here at xdk.intel.com, and that uh, you can do it with the Intel XDK. Now, is that using uh, jQuery Mobile? No, I believe. Uh, well, I think you have d you have different choices, but I know that Intel provides their own sort of framework, like jQuery Mobile. There's more than one, you know, Sencha Touch and other ones. So Intel has their own one with their own sort of UI interface and functionality, but it's JavaScript also. So there was the App Studio, that's uh, Android Studio, that's eventually going to be not in beta. There's the Intel one that you can play with, that's also free. And then this third one, which is the newest kid on the block, which is actually related to an older kid on the block, is actually from Microsoft. Uh, this is, uh, what do we call it again, Visual... 
Studio Community. Visual Studio Community 2013. Visual Studio has been around years and years, and it's used to create a variety of types of apps, usually desktop apps. You create an app that runs in Windows, you know, like a calendar app on Windows, Visual Studio. But it's been evolving, and I've been keeping an eye on it. Eventually, they added some, some additions to it to create uh, Windows Phone apps or Windows 8 apps. And then now, um, just like three days ago or a week at most, they said, okay, we're going to make our .NET open source, which is Microsoft's huge 10-year-old uh, programming language and such to create apps. Uh, back in that time, um, you know, um, they created their own um, programming language to create apps, .NET, uh, but now they've, uh, and it was proprietary, it was hundreds of dollars, I don't know, and now they made it open source, just like a week ago. And then uh, they've also put out Visual Studio Community 2013, which is their uh, cross-platform Visual Studio IDE, it's like their version of Eclipse, so to speak, to create Android apps as well. And that's going to rely also on, on uh, Cordova and jQuery Mobile and such. So if you go to check that screen out, it'll tell you you can make apps for everything, Windows, Android, iOS, from, from this, uh, using all the technologies that you know, JavaScript, HTML, etc., deployed to all devices, it's got debuggers and all of that, and you know, it's, it's an interface, code hinting, code collapsing, all of that stuff. Question? But if you wanted to create an app for iOS, would you have to be running it on a Mac? Um, good point. I haven't seen into it enough because this was just announced. Uh, but I think probably most likely you still have to run it on a Mac because um, it's still going to need the SDK code to compile that code into the appropriate platform. When I was playing with this a couple of days ago, I downloaded it on, on one of these school computers, and I and noticed the installation file. Oh, that's a really small IDE. It's only one megabyte. No, that's the installation file. It's then going to download like 500 megabytes. And then when that fully downloaded and it was ready to run, I turned it on, and then I went into, okay, file, new project, and there was right there, uh, Cordova project. I clicked on that, and I said, okay, now please install this. And it needed like a few hundred more megabytes to download. So it's doable, and I haven't gotten that far to actually get it to work, but I was playing with this because this is another alternative. How many of you have had any experience with Visual Studio before? Okay, so you might feel at home here with this community version. It's the free one. Um, you can continue to use your paid one. Uh, they'll be updating that, of course, 2015 and, and so forth, but here uh, it looks like another, you know, promising thing to work with, especially since it's free. And um, I wanted to bring these things to your attention because um, I've been seeing that the trend is um, not anymore. <coughs> People are not searching um, how to program as much. They're searching how to build an app. Well, building an app is programming, but people think of it that way. I want to build my app. I want to get rich. I want to you know, get famous. So how to build an app. And now we have several tools that do this, the ones we learned in this class, Eclipse, and so forth. And then there's other alternatives that you can start to experiment. And then maybe you'll find much better success with this Intel XDK. Whatever we learned here, you can still apply it there, but maybe these tools, because they, 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 they look at what came before, specifically Eclipse ADT, and they try to do it maybe easier, maybe better, maybe easier and better for you. So I would recommend check those out. Visual Studio Community 2013, Intel XDK, and then of course the Android App Studio. So at this point we'll wrap up the class. Uh, we've come through a lot. Some of you have gone all the way, very cool. Um, make sure everyone signed in wherever the sign-in sheet came. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we'll be starting the Thanksgiving vacation next week, so don't come. I, will, I won't be here. And uh, maybe see you in a future class.